I want my robots to be able to touch things, but more importantly, feel things. No, not love, just pressure. I engineered this robotic skin so I could detect the force that my robots are feeling. My goal is to make a cheap skin that I can apply to any surface. I could have done something simple, like just buy a sensor online, but I wanted to make my own really cheap skin sensor. So I built Iro. And it totally failed until it didn't. The design is simple. We have our Hall effect sensor, on top of that, a skin layer of silicone, and on top of that, our magnetic skin composed of iron and silicone. That, sandwiched together, forms our soft pressure sensor. All right, so one of our first ingredients is definitely these iron filings. They're gonna be the iron that we're magnetizing in order to uh, create our magnetic source. So we have pine, medium, and of course, I don't know if they're gonna be, you know, like preferable in one side as or the other for our sensor, but we'll find out. Here we have our silicone, Ecoflex 0010, and it is skin safe uh, once it's combined. So you take your A and your B, and once those are combined and mixed, uh, after four hours, you end up with a fairly soft, fairly flexible the silicone. So uh, we're gonna use this to put our iron in eventually. Once, uh, once we have it mixed up, we'll add iron and then we'll be good. Well, we're gonna now look at our magnetizer. It's a little janky, can only be on for five seconds before uh, it overheats. If you um, place something directly in the center, it will demagnetize. And if you place it on the outside in the against the walls of it, it will magnetize. This is our Hall effect sensor. It uh, detects magnetic fields on the side that's facing us. We have our Hall effect sensor running and um, just to test that it's gonna work, we'll uh, use a strong neodymium magnet. All right, that's south. The stronger the field, the bigger it gets. And that's north. Yep, strong enough field, bigger it gets. Okay, here we go. Okay, now we're gonna mix that up and then we'll add our 20 grams of iron. All right, we've got our uh, cured material. Um, it's not tacky or anything like that. It seems perfectly cured. And uh, same with our iron. And uh, yeah, you can see the little filings in there, but they're all suspended, so that's good. And yeah, so I'm gonna cool these out. All right, we've got our uh, our soft sample. Yeah, it feels pretty skin-like. And uh, it's, it's about four millimeters thick. And uh, I know I'm mixing units, but two inches by two inches across. Pretty elastic. But it also returns to its shape, which is good. Yeah, very satisfying. Now, for the iron, all right. Wow, super easy. That looks so cool. You can see the somewhat 3D printed texture on one side and, um, and then the smooth uh, side that was just exposed to the air there. I'm really satisfied with that, that that's, uh, that's great. Yeah. It's great. Cool. All right, so there are our pieces. So I pushed all my electronics away because I have no idea if it'll mess them up. Um, I've never used it before, but it says, yeah, just turn it on for five seconds and then turn it off. And what we're gonna do is if you put it in the middle, it's gonna demagnetize it. And if you put it on the side, um, 
it will magnetize it. So here we are, we're going to put it on the side, like that, just kind of on the bun. I'm going to give it four, because I don't want it to overheat and stop working. Now that power supply should be on, so I assume this light's going to go on when I start it. All right. Okay. That was our four seconds. Hopefully, this has been magnetized. We'll see if our iron uh, filing silicone, which we filled with five grams of, we filled this with five grams of silicone. So we'll see if uh, um, it's any any good, and whether it's magnetic. Now, no. our iron filing. No, nothing. Nothing. Sides. Nothing. 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 Okay, so that wasn't magnetic enough. The last time, so the five gram iron in the silicone didn't work. So we're gonna make two samples and we're gonna go up to uh, 20 grams. None of those formulations worked. The five gram didn't work and uh, denser ones didn't work. Less dense ones didn't work. None of them would provide the magnetism that I needed. I even tried the coarse, which fell out of solution and only has like a, uh, a coarse layer on top. So none of those were magnetic. And I then tried this next piece. While the solution of iron and silicone is setting, uh, I trap it between a magnetic seal created by two magnets sandwiching the test sample in between. The idea being here that the sample will have all the iron filings aligned along their north-south axes and will produce a better magnetic field. It was at this point that I found a research paper that did something similar, but they used neodymium magnet powder in their solution instead of iron filings. I'll link to the paper in the description. We're gonna use these, we're gonna sandwich them. And after we sandwich them, um, or as we're sandwiching them, we're gonna put this very small uh, mold in between. It looks like we have a mixture. Okay, now we're gonna pour that into this tiny mold. So we're gonna take this, uh, this magnet, place it here, take our button, put that, oh wow. A lot just kind of like shot out at the same time, a little bit from the edges. Luckily we have it in the mold. Shove it into the centerpiece. They all align themselves. And then we're gonna grab this other one and we are going to, oh man, <laughs> sandwich it on top. Okay. Luckily, successfully sandwiched, there's a little bit of uh, material that escapes, um, but it's really tiny. Um, and we are going to leave that in there to cure the, uh, the, whole, uh, the whole four hour cure time. And that didn't work either. And it turns out, if you ask ChatGPT if iron is magnetic, it will tell you it is but it is not permanently magnetic. When you magnetize it, it quickly loses its magnetism. So for that, you actually need uh, cobalt or uh, nickel added into the mix. So I did finally find one okayish solution. This is a piece of silicone wrapping a piece of uh, magnetic tape with another piece of silicone. And it gives it a little bit of buffer. It's still flexible. And uh, it's not as flexible as I would like it to be, but it's flexible. And uh, yeah, that's the solution, at least for the moment. We'll see.